Hey everybody, this is Rhino, and we are back with FTL Advanced Edition. So, what I'm gonna do is just prove immediately that this is Advanced Edition. Here we go, Advanced Edition Content, Enabled Disabled. So, the original FTL I was running was like version 1.01. .01. Now we see version 1.153 is what I'm running now. Let us just do the tutorial again. I hate to repeat, but I think it helps. Welcome to FTL. You're the captain of a Federation starship on ver a very important mission. The Federation is currently being torn apart by vicious rebels. Your ship is carrying data, data vital to the defense of the Federation. Da I like to think they mean data from Star Trek Next Generation. We are carrying data. <laughs> you will be traveling through the dangerous sectors of the galaxy with the rebel fleet in hot pursuit. Make it to the exit beacon of each sector before you can cat the rebels can catch you. Alright. First things first, I've ne reinstalled the thing, so I kept wondering why that was so loud. Make it to the exit beacon of the each sector before the rebels can catch you. The ship is the Kestrel is the focus of a typical game view. We know that's not true really. You get multiple multiple ships, even more now that we're playing the advanced edition. The circular icon loca located at the bottom of the screen are your ship's primary systems. So here are the systems. Systems use power from the reactor pointed to it by the arrow. These are your just system subsystem. Notice that they are a little bit different in the graphics. All the graphics have been updated just a little bit, except for like this stuff. <laughs> Hover your mouse over any system to get more information. So, looks like they've explained everything a little bit better too. Maybe written everything a little bit better. The whole meter shield level and current resources are at the top. So they didn't change anything drastically which people wouldn't like. Here's some new features. Return crew to save position. Save your crew's current positions. Nice! So I can now put my crew exactly where I want them. If I want this guy to be the shield master, that's what I'm calling them shield masters, I can put him in that room, click that button, and it will save that. And then if he gets moved to the med bay for healing, I can just click the button and send them right back. Send all the crew right back. It's great. Great new feature, just found out. We should get going, but it looks like your engineers are current engines are currently powered down. Green system boxes are powered, white system boxes are unpowered and providing no benefit to the Kestrel. Now already it seems like this tutorial is explaining things a little bit better. Left click the engine systems icons and power will transfer from your reactor to the engines. Well, I just did that. Try to keep your vital systems fully powered. Right click to depower the systems if you want to rewrite power. Oh no, your engine took two damage. It, its system icon has become red to show it's broken. Your whole meter has also taken two damage. Two damage on the hull. 
two damage on the engines and damage here so you can see damage everywhere plus we can't jump now that the engines are critical your crew cannot repair the ship's hull but they can fix the engines select your crew members using left click select multiple crew by clicking and dragging so we can just click and put him here and notice now it's put this green box it was a green circle before and now it is a green box click put them here now there's three green boxes being filled now can I send them to there why are they not moving because we are paused have to unpause for them to move this is a very strange game in the fact that it is both a pause game and a it is a fast and a slow game you have to pause to make it slow but if you don't pause then it will be very fast paced more fast paced than you could possibly imagine so I just want to show as an example I've moved these three guys to three different rooms. When they were repairing the engines, I saved their positions. Now click this, guess what they do? They just know to go back to their positions. Nice. So first things first you'd want to do is save these guys positions. Have somebody in each room. Alright, back to the tutorial. Crew members are automatically repair systems, fight fires, fix breaches, and fight intruders. Fighting low oxygen and fire will hurt your crew. Boy do I know that. It's particularly low oxygen. Awesome, your engines are now repaired. Notice that the repaired systems automatically try to repower themselves. That's always a little iffy. You want to double check. It, some systems can be manned by crew members to provide a small bonus to the system. Crew members automatically man any functioning system in the room. The silhouette above the power bar shows if a system is manned. So there is a man in the engine room. Also, they have improved when you see people get skills. So like they were doing repairs and as they were doing repairs there was a little repair monkey wrench here with a plus popping up between them. So you don't even have to hover and sit here and watch them level up. You can see it happening. Nice improvement. Oh no, there's a fire that's broken out in your starboard airlock. You could send crew members to put it out, but let's take advantage of the airlock. So left click those doors. Opening the doors allows you to drain sections of your ship of oxygen and put out fires. Rooms turn pink as oxygen drains out and the oxygen system slowly refill once the leak is gone. Now they cannot refill if the doors are open. Also notice that this is more striped I think than it used to be. So we see a stripe that means it would damage someone being in there. We see it pink when that just means somebody would um, so if I put this guy in here he's not going to start taking damage until now and he'll continue taking damage until it goes back to pink put him in the healing place that's fine let them heal up. And then send them back to their stations. Now the engines are fixed and the fires are out, we should FTL jump to the next location. If you don't currently have a pilot, you should probably send a crew member to the helm. Each jump consumes one fuel. Without fuel, you will be stranded and unable to jump. We know that for sure. We've done that a lot. 
Jumping also requires a crew member and the pilot systems and a powered engine. So you don't need somebody in the engines, but you do need it to be working and powered. Click the jump button to go. So, what's the main improvement here? We now see where we can jump after the next jump. So, you see these this centering circle which makes it easier to see for us all that helps a lot and then you see these yellow lines the yellow lines are places you could jump afterwards so from this point I can go to all those locations from this point I can go to all these locations if I hover over any particular star say I wanted to work my way backwards well you go to the exit and you go well this one's probably the closest and then this one, and then this one, and then this one. If you just wanted to plot out the quickest path. And that would probably be the quickest path. Same number of jumps. So, great new system. Now we no longer have to just eyeball it. Many a time in the original FTL, I would jump to a place and go, oh, will that make, will this one make it to the exit? No. Will this one make it to the exit? Okay. That'll make it to the exit. Ooh. Certainly wouldn't want to take that path. Yeah, that, that's about the worst path you could take would be to go here, and then here, and here, and then here, here, up here, up here, up here up here that would be the least amount of options and you want usually to have the most amount of options in case you can get some more information about whether there's ships there or um, distress calls this is the beacon map a ship marks your current location hover the mouse over the location to get more information about it current location an unvisited location an unvisited location Right now we don't have anything that would say anything but unvisited locations and our current location. It doesn't matter where we go, we're going to get in the same fight in the tutorial. So we get into this slug fight. Every new location will have an event like this. You might have multiple choices available to the event. In this example, a weak pirate ship is trying to destroy you. So I can special click continue, which you always get the option to continue. Special blue choices like these are unlocked by having certain upgrades and equipment. They're nearly always a good choice. Nearly always is accurate. I'd say like one scenario out of all the scenarios, it's not a good idea to click the blue or if you're playing specific strategies or trying to get specific things. Um, if I click the blue thing, it will give me a weapon. Let's see what happens when I click continue. Welcome to combat. You can press the space bar or middle mouse button to pause the game at any time to strategize, give commands, or do anything else. <laughs> that guy shot at me, so I paused. You need to, your power weapons, the amount of power required is pictured at the weapon marked below. So this dual laser needs one. Left click powered weapons to arm in. You can also use the hotkeys one, two, three, and four. The weapon when the weapon is ready to fire. Fire, make sure the game is paused, unpaused, and fire. So Typical strategy, attack their weapons, and then unpause. Notice something missing here. At the moment, there is no auto fire option. We will have to jump in after this and find out if they took out auto fire completely or if they just didn't have it here because of that 
Oh no, your current two-shot laser cannot penetrate the pirate's two level two shields. But luckily, he can get can't get through your shields either with his one-shot laser. Note, every two powered bars in your shield system nets you one more shield. So, if I had two more things, I could have a second shield. Two more, a third, two more, a fourth, up to four. He has a one shot laser that hits my shield and then my shield recharges before his laser can fire again. I have a two shot laser that hits his two shields and then by the time they're charged up to fire again hit both his shields are, are recharged so we could actually sit here forever and nothing would ever happen uh, probably something would eventually happen but I mean it would it could go on for 20 30 minutes and some fights have looks like you need a more some more help to get through the shields. Some events can provide items. This one is providing you with an Artemis Missiles Launcher. Yay. The Artemis was automatically equipped in the available weapon slot. Shooting it expands your missile stock. Expends. It uses your missiles. But missiles pierce through enemy shields. Use the missile to damage the enemy shields and then your lasers to cut through them. So, fire that. I don't know if this charge bar to recharge your um, shield was here before. You'll notice when enemy systems are damaged or destroyed, their icons turn orange or red res retrospectively. So they're, if they're partially damaged orange, then they turn red when they're just totally damaged. Repeatedly attacking a red system will do no additional damage to the system, but will still damage the enemy's hull. Reduce their hull to zero and they will explode. If you need the reminder for what each enemy system icon stands for, you can mouse over the green symbols at the bottom of the target box. Just in case they have something we don't have, because we could always just go over here and look at what that symbol means too. Choose your targets wisely though, weapons and shields often make good choices. Now defeat the pirate. Alright, so fire our laser and our missiles at their weapons. Real easy. You destroy the pirate ship. Any salvage you gain from the left to right. Some fuel, missiles, scrap, and another weapon. Note the reward resources icons correspond to your reserves along the top of the screen. So this fuel icon looks like this, except for it's a different color. This missile icon looks like that. And this scrap icon looks like that. But if you're going to colorize it, which I do like to color, then you maybe you colorize this too? I mean, this is kind of hard to see. Make it all that ugly neon green. If you want. Weapons or drones are added to your cargo if there's no more room in the retrospective systems. Left click the ship info button so we can equip your new weapon. Alright. This is the equipment screen. You can see more detailed information about your weapons, drones, and augments by mousing over them. Click and drag the new halberd beam over the Artemis to swap them, then hit accept. So, just hit accept. It's not letting me click to the crew of the upgrades. It's keeping me on a leash. Oops, the weapon system, max power 2, does not, is not upgraded enough to support your new weapon power requirement 3. Open your ship screen, back up so we can fix this. So now we see the ship, and now it's not letting me go to crew or equipment. This is the upgrade screen, you see detailed information about your systems and upgrade them by spending scrap. Now, I guess that means we're using the scrap to build things. 
because I couldn't possibly believe we're paying our crew in scrap to hand over personal upgrades to the ship. So, yeah, that wouldn't make much sense. I, I don't think anybody on a ship that's in the danger of being exploded would go, Hey, wait, I have this five upgrades to your weapon system I could give you, but I'd rather let us all die. You can also upgrade your reactor at the bottom of the menu, which is important for keeping everything fully powered. So, we need two upgrades on the weapon and two more power things would be nice. Now, sometimes this tutorial still has some problems because you want to go over there and click accept. Accept is grayed out. You have to come over here and click OK, continue. Left click on your weapon systems to upgrade, then click accept to close it. Well, I already did that. Why didn't you detect that? Now you have power and uh, now power your new weapon. You might need to power down your other weapon in order to have enough power. Oh no, I don't really need to do that. Final tip, you can rearrange your weapons in the weapon system tool by clicking and dragging. If your weapon system is damaged, this order determines the order that they are depowered. That's it for the basics. Alright, before I click continue to quit, so you drag this along, so if it takes one damage, the weapon system here, then this will become depowered, and you'll still have three, but if it takes two damage, well then this would only have two and not be able to power it. So it might be smarter to do this because then it would take, this would go off when you took one damage and this would stay on when you took two and still stay on when you took three. And so you'd at least have your dual laser. Now that's all up to preference for the most part. You just kind of have to figure it out. And once again, I want to just move these guys all the way into other sections and use this awesome new feature. I'm going to love that. And that's it for the tutorial. And that's it for this episode. Not quite yet. No, we still got a lot to go, so don't, don't leave yet. Uh... Now, ships have a layout C. Now, getting layout C is not beating all three of the achievements as far as I can tell. And I'll prove that. Kestrel victory. Cruise, cruiser victory. Defeat the flagship with any layout with the Kestrel. So, this layout or the C layout or the B layout. We haven't done that. Next ship is the NG ship, which we have done all of them. So you would think if we did have to do that, we would ha automatically have unlocked the um, C room. And it's just not true. There's something else we have to do to unlock the C layouts. So every ship's got a new thing. Now this victory thing I will show you in a minute and explain what it means. Here we go. So, the one ship, the one time we have beaten the boss, was the Nother. The layout B of the, was this Zoltan ships? Yeah, I think these are Zoltan ships. What are these? Zoltans, yeah. So we got one victory and so when we hover over it says achieved with type B on easy. So we could achieve this with type A on easy and type C on easy and then maybe get them all on hard. And now we have a lit up Zoltan cruiser quest. Complete the unlock quest for the Zoltan cruiser. Unlocked on normal. Hmm. So. I did something that unlocked the Zoltan Cruiser. I don't know what, 
but it seems like I did it, and I don't know how I unlocked it on normal. It did unlock a ship when I installed the update, just automatically. So, that's probably the one that was it. So, Red Tail, Vortex, Nother. Huh? Hmm. Oh. <laughs> I did this to myself before, and this is funny. When you're on layout B, and you start going here, you see the layout Bs. Now, what do I have layout B unlocked? I'll have the red tail, the vortex, and the nether, and nothing else. So, I have to go back to layout A, so I can see the A layout ships. The Kestrel, the Taurus... The ship we unlocked in the last episode, the Osprey, the Federation ship, which we will be using next episode. Next episode, we will be playing with that. The Adjudicator and the Gila monster. I believe this is the one we unlocked. I believe it is a Mantis cruiser. I think we unlocked it for having like four ships unlocked or something else about the ad advanced edition. The Bulwark and the Nasaso and the Kronos. And Kronos I believe is a new ship we we unlocked in advanced edition. Notice it only has an A and a B on the Kronos. Right. Gila Monster has A, B, and C. So, Kronos is probably a very special ship. It's starting with um, these rooms unoxygenated. I think these are new species. The Lannis. Drains oxygen from rooms. Interesting. So, a whole new species we haven't even done anything with. These are Rockmen. This is a special Rockman? Why is it a different color? Hmm. Well, they're different colors for some reason. Maybe that's a gender division that they've done. <laughs> so. Yep, that's... We've got two new... Uh, ships to play with which will be great we've got several more runs we're gonna do lots more runs <laughs> spacing out we have normal mode and easy mode was originally in the game so originally the hardest mode was uh, was normal mode and I ranted at least once or twice that there should be a hard run and guess what they did? They put in a hard mode. I don't know if we're ever going to get to hard mode. Uh, I think we may max out everything, even on advanced edition. On easy, maybe do a couple things on normal. Um, we're going to see a lot more scenarios. We're going to see a lot more stuff. I'm going to start a game. This intro is the same. As before, the data you carry is vital to the remaining Federation fleet. You'll need supplies for the journey, so make sure to explore each sector before moving on to the next sector. But get to the exit before the pursuing rebels can catch up. Same old, same old intro. Same old, same old guys. Look at this. They are in their safe positions. Did... Did I do that? Don't tell me. Alright, so... We're gonna... Just go ahead and put all these guys... In the different save positions. Save their positions. And then exit. We were just checking... For auto fire. Auto fire is here. That was just taken out for the tutorial. That would be a major change. 
out of all these changes that so far look great, that would be a pretty big change to irritate us. Uh, super blast doors. How do you get super blast doors? Hmm. I'm not sure how you would get that. You probably have to buy something. Let's see, I can't hover over there to hover over that. <laughs> Interesting. See enemy power usage. Um. Well, that was what we could always get. But there's now a new sensor. Max sensor, I suppose. Even higher. Uh, weapons haven't changed. Oxygen hasn't changed. Uh, dodge. Okay, let's see. Dodge hasn't changed. Shields haven't changed. Maybe some of the prices here have changed, but I would not know. Would not know for a second if they slightly tweaked it, but I doubt they did. Look at this new explanation here on cruise skills. It's taking up much more of the screen. It's explaining things a lot better. And now it says human skills improve slightly faster. So s humans actually are useful. It used to say no exceptional traits under humans. Now they have the trait that their skills uh, improve slightly faster. So they get smarter faster. Okay, I'll buy that. They've looks like they've redone their explanations here, so it's a little bit easier to read, maybe more uniform. But that's it for this episode. Not yet. I'm not gonna quite call it yet. Let's see. New pause screen, of course, and then. Let's restart here and send them to their sections. Nope. So, did not save the locations I had before. I didn't think it would, but that's fine. At least they are putting them in a smart section here. I mean, when we look at these ships, at least it's spreading out the crew. It used to be that the crew would all be bunched up in the pilot and then you would have to first game, first thing in every game, sit there and move things around. Alright. We will be playing as the Osprey next episode. But that is it for this episode. I'm Sorry if this was a little boring because we went through the tutorial again, but I felt it was necessary to just show the beginnings of what has been improved. I feel like the 1.5 is maybe even underselling it a little bit. I mean, they did a lot to fix a game that was fun originally, but had a few problems, and now we can go... Ahead. I wish it said FTL Advanced Edition here. That's the only real thing I can com complain about at the moment is that it doesn't say FTL Advanced Edition here. But that's it for this episode. As always, like, share, subscribe, comment if you want to, and watch every second of the video. All of that helps out. Have a good evening.